Desert Giant, The World of the Saguaro Cactus by Barbara Bash. A strange and wonderful tree grows in the desert. It is called a saguaro cactus and its Latin name is Saruras gigantus. There are many unusual shapes in the saguaro world. Walking out among them, you might feel as though you're surrounded by people, the saguaro people. The saguaro grows in the Sonoran Desert, which stretches through parts of Arizona, California, and Mexico. This cactus can grow as tall as 50 feet, weigh up to several tons, and live for 200 years. The saguaro's sharp spines protect it from harm. The accordion-like pleats in its skin expand in the rain, storing extra water for the long, dry times. When you stand in the desert, everything is quiet. But if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of the wind moving past the spines. Now there's another sound, tap, tap, tap. The holes you see in the saguaro trunk are made by the carpenter bird, the Gila woodpecker. In the spring, the male pecks deeply into the soft flesh of the cactus to make room for his mate's eggs to hatch. The saguaro's flesh forms a hard callus lining around the nest. When the cactus dies and decomposes, these hollow forms are left behind on the ground. They are called saguaro boots by the Indians, who use them as food containers. When the Gila woodpecker moves out of its nest, the elf owl moves in. This is the tiniest owl in the world, measuring just five inches long. The elf owl is nocturnal, hunting for small insects, centipedes, and scorpions at night and sleeping in the nest during the day. Because of the thick lining and the moisture stored in the saguaro's flesh, the nest stays cool even on the hottest days. Harris hawks are the largest birds to make their homes in the saguaro. They raise their young in nests of twigs lined with leaves and grasses. Living in cooperative societies, much like wolves, up to four hawks can inhabit the same territory. Sometimes, the hawks use each other as perches. As many as three birds have been seen stacked on top of a saguaro. This is called backstanding. Nighttime. The moon shines in the dark sky. It's May time. For the it's time for the saguaro to blossom. Out of the top of the cactus, high above the ground, the buds emerge and open into large milky white flowers with yellow centers. Each flower opens only once in the cool of the night and closes by the following afternoon. Suddenly, you hear a flapping of wings. A long-nosed bat has come to drink the nectar hidden deep in the center of the flower. As a bat drinks, the pollen dust sticks to its face and is carried uh, along to pollinate the next bloom. The next morning, the white-winged dove arrive. They like to drink the flower nectar too. One lands on top of the swirl and ducks, dunks its head way inside. A queen butterfly alights on a petal and a bee circles around buzzing. Every creature that drinks the nectar picks up more pollen and carries it on to fertilize the next flower. When the flower is fertilized, the fruit begins to form. It is very hot out under the desert sun. By early afternoon, the flowers that opened the night before have closed and the doves have flown into the shade to rest. By June, the saguaro blossoms have dried into brown stalks and fruit has formed from the bases. The seeds are ripening and the fruit begins to split open, revealing its bright red insides. As they have been doing for centuries, the Tohonam Odom Indians begin to the saguaro fruit harvest. The young women and children go out into the desert with buckets and gathering poles made of saguaro ribs bound together. Wooden cross pieces are wired onto the top 
and middle form, forming the prongs that pull the ripe fruit down. The children try to catch the fruit as it falls. Sometimes they steal a taste of the sweet, juicy pulp. As the fruit is knocked down, the women scoop the bright red pulp full of tiny black seeds into buckets. When the buckets are full and heavy, they are carried back to the camp. The women leave the red outer hulls behind on the ground, open and facing up to the sun. This is the Odom offering for rain. At the campsite, the men gather wood for the fire, and the old women remove any pebbles from the fruit pulp. Then the pulp is mixed with water and cooked for a long time until it is thick and sweet. Finally, the cooked pulp is poured through wire mesh to separate the juice from the seeds. The Oodoham make jams and candies, syrups and wines out of the swaro fruit. Harvest is a time for celebration because there is a good swaro food to eat, and soon the rains will come. Back at the swaro, more fruit is ripening. The curved billed thrasher comes to eat the sweet pulp and harvester ants scurry around gathering the seeds. The horned lizard waits for the fallen fruit for the ants to walk by. In a flash, he catches one with his long, fast, sticky tongue. Nighttime. More fruit has dropped to the ground and the air is cool. A coyote arrives to lick the fruit pulp out of the fallen rinds. Nearby, some javelinas, pigs grunt and snort as they scoop up the sweet fruit. It is a feasting time for the Indians, animals, birds, and ants. Everyone loves the swaro fruit. After providing food and homes for so many creatures, the swaro eventually dies. Sometimes old age and weakening tissue make it prey to bacteria. The soft outer flesh falls away, exposing the swaro ribs, which spread out like a big whisk broom. At other times, strong winds or lightning knock the swaro to the ground, where it gradually decomposes. Now a whole new set of creatures moves in to live in the swaro. Inside the dead swaro, termites chew the wood. A black widow spider spins her web. The giant desert centipede searches for insects. On top of a downed swaro, a banded gecko bask in the sun, while underneath a cactus mouse stores seeds in its cheek pouches and a spotted night snake curls in the cool darkness. Deep inside, the water is released as the swaro decomposes and the aquatic beetle swims through the channels. A large hister beetle probes the dark tunnels in search of fly larvae and small insects. The striped-tailed scorpion looks for prey amidst the rubble, while a giant millipede searches for decaying swaro tissue to feed on. While one swaro dies, another begins its new life. Each fruit-bearing swaro produces millions of seeds, but most are eaten before they can sprout. The seeds that do germinate grow so slowly that the tiny swaros are easily knocked over by animals or washed away by flash floods. The only swaros that have a chance of survival are those that begin their growth in the shelter of a nurse plant. The canopy of the larger tree protects the young swaro, and for many years it grows safely. Eventually, the nurse plant dies, but by then the swaro is strong enough to stand alone. After 50 years, it begins to produce flowers and fruit. After 75 years, the swaro's arms start to appear. When it reaches 150 years old, the cactus giant tow towers quietly over the desert. <laughs>